today I've got some of the biggest stories of the year for you, starting with those melting 4090 connectors being worse than anyone thought. Intel CPUs have a serious issue, Ryzen 8000 CPUs are coming to the US, I told you this might happen, and you won't need a GPU with AMD's next gen Ryzen APUs. Welcome everyone to Gamer Melt. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, we hadn't really heard much about NVIDIA's RTX 4090 connectors melting in quite a while, and that led me to believe that the new connector was working. If you remember not too long ago, well, really quickly, this is the original 12 VHPWR connector, but not too long ago, NVIDIA actually started releasing new GPUs with this new connector. Now, when I say new GPUs, I do include the 4090 with that. It's just new GPUs that were manufactured after a certain point should be getting these connectors. And while there are multiple changes that have happened to this connector, one of the biggest ones, if you ask me, is the sense pin. You can actually see in the original one right here, the sense pin goes all the way out to the end, but right here, they pull it back in the new connector by quite a bit. And that's because if you saw Gamers Nexus video, you know that one of the main reasons, if not the main reason why these GPUs ultimately end up burning the connector is because the cable started disconnecting a bit from the connector or it wasn't seated properly to begin with. Either way, this should fix that because if it does become separated from the connector, it should stop delivering power to the GPU, therefore not melting it. Well, unfortunately, that is not the case, or at least there's quite a bit more of a failure rate of these older connectors than we originally thought because according to Northbridge Fix, you can see right here, they're showing a box of 200 melted RTX 4090 connectors and get this, it's from one month alone. So yeah, it looks like it, at least is, this isn't some huge hoax or anything. The 4090 connectors melting is a much bigger issue than anyone thought. If you remember not too long ago, Cable Mod actually canceled their angled adapter. They actually ended up canceling pretty much all of their adapters and offering refunds. Well, According to Northbridge Fix, there's actually not really an issue with the connector itself. You can see it says Northbridge Fix claims that the cable mod actually made a good product, but it was built on a broken foundation, i.e. this connector. If you remember early on when NVIDIA actually acknowledged this issue, they were acting like, oh, it was just a handful of people. It was nothing. But months later, we're talking upwards of 200 now. This could have become a much major issue. Maybe early on at the beginning, it was no big deal. Obviously, not that many people even had 4090s at that point, but with that said, maybe over time, what's happening is that the cable is separating from the connector. It just takes a little bit of time. Now, I don't know that that's what the case is for sure, but it's definitely not looking good. And for anyone who currently owns an RTX 4090, I would definitely make sure once again that your cable is seated properly. And next up for today, I've been talking about this for quite a while if you've been following this channel. And of course, if you love staying up to date on all the latest PC hardware news, make sure you subscribe to Gamer Melt. Either way, if you have been following the channel, you know that Intel's 13,900K and 14,900K CPUs seem to be causing some major issues. Specifically, they seem to be causing quite a bit of crashes in a ton of games. Now, this story I covered a little while back, as Tom's Hardware mentions, it seems to boil down to issues with your motherboard BIOS settings, basically allowing the power draw to get to astronomical levels. And before I actually get to the main story, I do want to reiterate, see, a lot of people seem to be saying, well, it's the motherboard vendor's fault. Obviously, it's not really Intel's. All you got to do is just lower power limit settings. You can actually see it right here where they lower those settings in the motherboard and, oh, you're good. But as Tom's hardware mentions, you can see it says with past Intel CPUs, setting a TDP or amperage absurdly high generally didn't make a difference as complex frequency boosting rules determine how much actual power and current are used. There are protection mechanisms to prevent a CPU from damaging itself. However, the 13,900K in combination with certain BIOS settings appears to be more temperamental than prior chips. So while yes, it somewhat is motherboard maker's fault, it also really does seem to be like there's some kind of issue with these CPUs. And this brings me to the next story. 
As you can see right here, Nvidia released a new driver. And it's not really the driver itself that's all that interesting, it's just a bit of a note right down here. It says, once again, this is coming directly from Nvidia, it says, if your system is using an Intel 13th or 14th gen, unlocked desktop CPU and is experiencing stability issues slash out of video memory error. Remember, that's the error that you end up getting when it's actually your CPU, which for obvious reasons has been confusing quite a bit of people thinking that it's actually their GPU because it does mention video memory. But as you can see, it goes on to say, when you experience these issues to the desktop while the gaming is compiling shaders, please consult the following sites for troubleshooting assistance. And it's reporting an issue with Intel CPUs, meaning this is Nvidia directly stating that these are problems with Intel CPUs. So yeah, if you do own one of these CPUs, I would definitely contact Intel. Hopefully it's nothing major and it does seem like it can be fixed by lowering settings. But of course, if you just spent all this money on a CPU, the last thing you want to do is intentionally nerf it. And next up, we have one really awesome story coming out from AMD. If you've been following this channel, once again, you know that AMD somewhat announced, they really just kind of mentioned it in a slide, but their Ryzen 7 8700F and Ryzen 5 8400F CPUs. Unfortunately, when I was originally discussing this, it was only really announced in China, so it seemed to be a China-only release. Well, just like I said in my recent video, that may not be the case for long, and it looks like it actually is not. It says AMD has updated its website just as the new desktop CPUs became available. It says according to the company, the 8000F series was launched on April 1st, but there wasn't much news coming from AMD about this particular launch. And as I said, they were only really mentioned during a special event in China. But AMD had made no comments about pricing, release date, or any of that. Well, according to AMD, both of these CPUs will be available globally. So it's not just going to be China, they're going to be coming to the US and everywhere else. With that said, according to reports, both SKUs do seem like they're only going to be available to OEM partners. Now, that doesn't mean that they won't end up on retail stores, it just means that at least for now there isn't an official MSRP, but as they say, their availability will depend on how quickly the companies start selling them on trays to retailers, which is almost certainly going to happen. So retailers will likely get their hands on these and we will be able to buy them, but at least for now, there isn't any kind of official MSRP that we can go on. And because they are now officially released, we do know all of the specs, although honestly, I've gone over most of these with you anyway. As they state, we basically now know that the SKUs are Phoenix slash Hawkpoint silicons without the integrated GPU, making these the first Ryzen 8000 desktop CPUs. But forget about 8000 G APUs because we just got some new information on AMD's upcoming Strix Point, their next gen Strix Point APUs. And let's just say GPUs seriously need to be worried. As you can see right down here, this was originally mentioned by this leaker right here, where he actually stated what we can expect from these upcoming APUs via benchmarks. As you can see, it says Xeno stated that the 12 compute unit config is rated at around 3,150 points in 3D Mark's time spy at a constrained TDP of just 22 to 24 watts, and we can expect close to 4,000 points in the same benchmark with the full configuration. And what they mean by full configuration is that these bad boys apparently go all the way up to 16 CUs, so that's 16 GPU cores. Not only that, but don't forget that the iGPU is based on RDNA 3 Plus and the CPU gets Zen 5 and Zen 5C. This means we're not only going from 12 CUs, but we're also getting a new GPU architecture and we're also getting their next gen CPU architecture. And according to this, this bad boy is upwards of 35% faster with the CPU versus Phoenix, so we really could see that 40% that we were seeing with Zen 5. But, believe it or not, the biggest news here isn't actually on the Zen 5 CPU, it's actually that iGPU. As you can see right here, Strix Point, when we compare 3D Mark Time Spy, we can see that while, yes, the RTX 3050 does technically beat Strix Point, don't forget that it's at 50 watts 
while Strix Point is only at 22. So as WCCF tech suggests, what that means is that when you actually get it all the way to max, much higher than the 22 watt constraint, it should actually be able to beat NVIDIA's RTX 3050. But not only that, but the 12 CU Strix Point at 22 watts also beats the Hawk Point 12 CU at 55 watts. Basically, if this is right, next gen APUs are set to make a brand new benchmark on what APUs actually can do. And what's wild is that I just recently covered a story that claims that Strix Point is worse than what AMD originally planned because they're having to add all the uh, AI cores in there, all that good stuff. But even with all of that, they apparently were still able to get some massive performance. So while that does it for today, are you pumped for AMD's next gen APUs? Let me know down in the comments below. And if you liked the video, please make sure to subscribe and give it a thumbs up. And as always, have a great day.